Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call back to order this meeting of the uh, Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. This is a meeting continued from last night. And um, we have uh, regrets until he arrives from Councillor Adams, who is conducting a budget consultation and a community center. And um, the rest of us are back with our sunshiny faces. Uh, it's a continuation of the meeting, so I don't think we need to renew our declarations of pecuniary interest. There's new people here, right? I beg your pardon? There are new people here that weren't here last night. Well, then, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I need to uh, restate my declaration of pecuniary interest as one of my income tax clients is an employee of the Clublink Corporation and uh, works at the, uh, the Glen Abbey Golf Course. Thank you. Thank That's concerning Council. item number 14. Thank you, Councillor. Can I have order? Um, if you, if you want to be here, you have to follow the rules, all right? Um, the, uh, the first item, Council, that I'd ask you to turn your attention to now is number three on your agenda, the recommendation report for the town-initiated official plan amendment for the Kerr Village Growth Area Review. And uh, if you'll give your attention to Brad Sunderland, if Brad wants to give a presentation. Brad? No. Looking, Brandy, pardon? Brandy Village. No? It's a Brandy Village. We did it last night, I remember. It's this one. Oh, I've been misdirected. I, I actually misread my own note. Number five. I beg your pardon. <laughs> let's do uh, Brawny Village. And let's still call Brad. <laughs> Hey, I had part of it right. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council. The report on the Brawny Village Growth Area Review is item five on tonight's agenda and can be found on page 121 of the agenda package. The Brawny Village Growth Area Review uh, is a town initiated and comprehensive review of the policies that guide future development in Bronte Village and is one of many studies being undertaken as part of the town-wide official plan review. The intent of the review was to assess if and how development within Bronte Village is meeting the livable Oakville plan's objectives, including assessing if the right type and mix of uses, heights and densities are provided to enable the vision established for Bronte. Staff were directed by Council to review the policies in Bronte Village in 2014 due to a lack of development happening within the growth area since the approval of the livable Oakville plan. The purpose of the report before you this evening is to present a recommended official plan amendment for Bronte Village and to seek Council's adoption of the amendment. The review began in May of 2015 and since that time staff have hosted three public open houses, two public information sessions and have hosted several stakeholder meetings including four meetings at the Livable Oakville Council subcommittee. The study process included public engagement and consultation opportunities throughout, including public input on draft directions, the draft policies, and most recently on a proposed official plan amendment which was presented at a public meeting of Planning and Development Council on Oct October 11th, 2017. Staff considered the comments received from the public meeting and based on the review of these comments, staff are now recommending an official plan amendment for Council's consideration and adoption. Throughout the study process, staff have consulted with hundreds of interested stakeholders, residents, businesses, and property owners. The recommended official plan amendment before you this evening represents a balance of public views and opinion. The official plan amendment for Bronte will feed into the broader town-wide provincial and regional conformity review, which will take place at the end of, uh, in coordination with Halton Region's official plan review. At that time, further policy updates may be required to ensure full consistency and conformity with provincial and regional plans. The proposed official plan amendment, which was presented in detail at the statutory public meeting on October 11th, presented a number of changes to the policies for Bronte Village. Based on a review of comments received at the statutory public meeting, the policy amendments as highlighted on this slide continue to form part of the recommended official plan amendment for Council's consideration. So 
Throughout the town-initiated growth area review, there has been several privately initiated development applications which have sought to change the policy and permissions of the official plan. For example, this evening, a privately initiated development application within the Brawny area will be considered under uh, Agenda Item 7, which proposes to amend the official plan at the southwest corner of Sovereign and East Street. In this case, the town initiated official plan amendment is in line with the privately initiated development application, which will be discussed under item seven. There has been a significant amount of discussion about the appropriate building heights as part of the review. In order to further enable revitalization, the recommended amendment provides increased development opportunities and expanded areas eligible for bonusing at a scale and context appropriate for the Brony Village growth area. The changes uh, made through the amendment are highlighted in the red uh, boundary. Gateway, lo gateway locations at the intersections of Bronte Road and Lakeshore Road, as well as at East Street and Lakeshore Road, continue to be emphasized as locations where additional residential intensification is to be directed, with bonusing eligibility up to 10 stories at the south uh, east corner of Lakeshore and East Street. The Main Street area along Lakeshore Road continues to provide for a low-rise, pedestrian-oriented scale with policies to ensure that taller building elements are stepped back from the street edge to reduce shadow impacts with bonusing eligibility up to a maximum of six stories. The recommended official plan amendment upholds the context of Bronte Village within the town-wide urban structure as a main street area, which is recognized for its distinctive character and it's intended to accommodate lesser amounts of intensification as compared to some of our other growth nodes, such as Midtown Oakville. However, given the ongoing nature of discussions with the public regarding building heights and enabling uh, development within Bronte Village, staff continue to explore how considerations of this nature may be dealt with going forward as part of other studies. One consideration that has emerged from these discussions is if there's merit to provide additional criteria to assess applications which propose to amend the official plan within a growth area. Another consideration is the exploration of financial tools which may assist to enable the development envisioned within the town's growth areas. As a result of comments received at the public meeting uh, in October, uh, which were outlined in, are outlined in detail in the uh, staff report, refinements have been made to the recommended town initiated op uh, official plan amendment before you this evening. The refinements include removing the words growth target in the heading and replacing it with minimum density to reflect wording in the provincial growth plan. It includes a revised policy to encourage pedestrian connections to the harbour and waterfront beyond the pedestrian connections shown on the urban design schedule. It includes a new policy to permit cultural uses such as museums and art galleries as well as restaurants and public halls within existing buildings in the waterfront open space and harbour areas. This policy recognizes the existing restaurant and banquet facility on the harbor and provides expanded opportunities for the adaptive reuse of the Metro Marine Building when a final use for that structure is determined. The amendment also includes mapping changes required uh, to reflect the, uh, in the urban structure schedule to reflect the proposed growth area boundary adjustments. It also includes a revised policy to permit limited office on the ground floor within mixed use buildings, which is in keeping with the existing zoning regulations we have today, with the intent to encourage more active uh, uses along the street edge. And finally, it includes housekeeping edits to correct some punctuation, grammar, and remove some policy duplication. Since the staff report was written, staff have been advised by Halton Region that the official plan amendment for the Bronte Village growth area is not exempt from regional approval. As such, should Council pass the recommended bylaw to adopt the official plan amendment before you this evening, the amendment must be forwarded to Halton Region for final approval. Given this, revised recommendations have been prepared as outlined in a memo to Council, which has been distributed by the clerk and are presented as follows. With that, I will close my presentation and open up for questions. Thank you very much. Are there, Councillor O'Meara? 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Brad and Diane and team. I, I know it's been a very long process, and, uh, and you've gone above and beyond to reach out to the community and, and listen to their concerns, and, and it hasn't been easy, and I know for Councillor Robinson and myself, uh, it hasn't been easy either. There, there's, there's always trying to find a happy line here. Um, I have a question uh, with regards to um, the two-story piece of land on the north side of Lakeshore Road, um, uh, sort of, it would be sort of the north gateway coming from the east to the west. Uh, I'm wondering what our plans for that are or how we factor those plans in or if at what point we might be able to establish a community improvement plan where we might be able to foresee um, some kind of a gateway or art piece or something uh, on that piece of land long down in the future. But as development happens and bonusing happens, do where, at what point will we start to look at what we want to do uh, or how we want to use that that uh, that bonusing money. So through you, Mr. Mayor, I think the uh, the bonusing conversation will happen as privately initiated development applications come forward. Um, there is a listing of uh, kind of a uh, priority list, I guess, of um, benefits which have been identified in the official plan. Um, for what that money could be used for, but really it is an open discussion. Uh, it could be used for anything that's identified through that, that bonusing process. Um, with regard to the gateway at the east end of the study site uh, on the north side of Lakeshore Road, um, again, at, as part of a gateway policy that's in that location, it is the, the location where we encourage public art uh, encourage enhanced streetscape uh, feature at that at that corner to emphasize the entryway into the kind of commercial Main Street district, um, and so those are conversations that can be had when uh, there's uh, an application in front of us. I, I guess just to follow that up. Um as we're not expanding the permissions on that piece of property in the long foreseeable future, um, I don't see uh, that place being redeveloped to keep it at the current height. So I guess, is there a way that council can have a plan to identify property that it would like to purchase and turn over to the community? Through your worship to Councillor Romero, I think you had mentioned it earlier, Councillor, was a community improvement plan. I think that's an excellent opportunity to focus both private and public sector investment on things that are a priority uh, with respect to the Brawny uh, growth area. It can be done for any community, economic development, social or environmental purpose, so it's broadly defined, which would include public art, things like that. You can target specific properties and uh, have programs in effect to help with acquisition of those lands. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's the excellent vehicle. That would be the one I would recommend to Council. Okay, so we can maybe discuss moving forward then. That doesn't have to be done at this point. We can bring that back at a future date. Certainly, through you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Your Worship. And thank you again for all your work, everyone. Councillor, uh, thank you for raising my favorite planning tool, community improvement plans. I, I promise to work with you to bring that forward as soon as uh, you're interested. I think it's a very valuable tool for this town. Any other questions on council for Mr. Sunderland? Madam Clerk, are there registered delegations you'd like to call? Yes, our first registered delegation is Shelley Thornborough from the Bronte Village Residents Association. Ms. Thornborough, welcome back. Council looks forward to your information. Good evening, Your Worship, regional and town members of council, staff, and members of the public. I want to again thank you for the opportunity to delegate before you on the uh, Bronte Village Growth Area Review. We realize that this has been a long process and something that we've been engaged with in the community as well as the planning staff and the councillors since uh, the May of 20, uh, 2015 and see this as a very important juncture in terms of a catalyst for growth in our community. The Bronte Village Residents Association and the community strongly supports 
growth and development that makes sense for this community. It is often being put to us that we are against change and growth, and that's quite um, to the contrary. We support development that is smart and responsible, it's sustainable, and most importantly, it's community-centric because these are, th these are the equity owners that are part and parcel of our community. There are a number of directions um, that have been put forward by the planning department, so we'll go into um, the, uh, the responses we have in terms of these draft recommendations um, in consultation with our membership and the community. And the first one is to maintain the existing growth area. We have no objections to this. It does look to exclude St. Anne's Court, but it does provide for a focused and unified strategy in terms of a vision for Bronte and utilizing the waterfront as a main feature to ensure allure and history of the area is not lost in the urban design features. The next um, draft recommendation we do support in terms of uh, planning directions requiring office or commercial use along the ground level within the Bronte Village core and flexibility of use along the side streets. This is consistent with the current zoning bylaws and practices and supports the overall theme for multi-use within the area helping to promote vibrancy. We also support strengthening and enhancing urban design policies to try and make a more um, vibrant area. Maintaining that lakeside character of the village is key though. Promoting safety in terms of pedestrian and cyclist access and coordinating infrastructure development in tandem with this growth. We do support site-specific policy direction for the Bronte Harbor. Um, the Bronte Harbor uh, BVRA supports protecting, maintaining, and enhancing the waterfront park, the harbor, and marina. And in doing so, we look to promote open spaces, a better utilization of public lands, particularly in the marina area. Public access and connectivity is very key. And other forms of non-motorized boating and leisure supports to bring to the ambiance of the area. Green infrastructure preserving the natural landmarks, which include our beaches, water, watersheds, and wildlife and enhancing Bronte Harbor as a tourist destination. Okay, I've gone one more one. The draft recommendation to emphasize the Eastern Gateway is supported in as far as providing public art and structures, landscape set, setbacks and street, streetscapes characterized by a sense of balance to signify a gateway into Bronte along the backdrop of cultural heritage and tourist allure. We do not feel that an Eastern Gateway has to be emphasized by a, an erection of a building, um, a, a tall one at that on the southeast corner. I think uh, it's, it's, it's prevalent that we can look at emphasizing the gateway through other forms um, that bring balance and a sense of place within the community. The following, the next draft recommendation is broadening residential permissions. And this is in particular response to the transition areas going from the Bronte Village core into the residential area to the north of Lakeshore. We support soft transitioning from the main street, aligning to the zoning and the bylaws of adjacent lands in keeping with the character of the neighborhood and promoting stable communities. <coughs> The draft recommendation expanding bonuses on, on Main Street. We support the MU1 bon, um, zoning bylaw that is in place up to a maximum of six stories on the Main Street, facilitating the need for revitalization for both property owners, business owners, and the community. We do, though, feel that a maximum of six stories with bonusing is adequate for, for the area. And this has been... Um, reiterated in a study that was conducted in 2016 by consultants in line, and, um, let me just see where my notes are here, sorry, which actually supported the, the, uh, the notion that four to six stories of height is financially feasible. So this was a assessment of redevelopment and viability within the town of Oakville by Ann Barry Line consultants. And Based on this and the recommendations from the community, we feel that this is um, a strong point in order to try and maximize the height at six with bonusing. There is an additional amendment put in the, um, the Bronte Village Growth Review, uh, expanding bonusing 
that does not um, that does not require public input and transportation impact analysis. And this is something that we do not support at all. We feel it's very important to have public input for bonusing as it goes forward, and there needs to be transportation impact analysis so that we do understand what this level of development means for the area and the community. We brought in this model, which is um, it's taken from the Livable by Design um, report that was put out to, to council last night. And this shows a 3D model highlighting a very sort of tunnel vision through Bronte, very uncharacteristic of the lakeside village. Knowing that this is just a mock-up, but it does give us an indication that without, without looking at restricting the, build, the height and adequate setback, it does create this this tunnel vision within Bronte and detracts from the lakeside character and definitely the focus point of the waterfront park and the, and the harbor. And you can see further in this demonstration that, that tunnel effect that's created through this modeling. Now realizing it is just a model, but it does really give, it does set, set a certain tone and we would like to ensure that we try and keep um, that lakeside effect within the Bronte village. So, in support of the growth review as it stands, we do not support the motion as it stands in its current form. We look to ensure that bonusing is kept to a maximum of six along the main street. Um, and we look for public input and transport and traffic impact analysis for additional bonusing applications along the main street that would fall outside of the OPA. Soft transitions are what are we recommending from the main street to the residential area north of Lakeshore Road West and transparency and consistency when defining and measuring the density or growth. And this is one of the directions where um, they're looking, where the report is looking to redefine growth to a minimum density and remove the, numer the numerical values associated with defining the growth. And we believe in doing so, we take away transparency and consistency when defining and measuring this. We also look for a sense of balance when defining gateways that relies on structures that promote culture, heritage, and tourism. And we realize that there is change that needs to come to Bronte, but we don't feel that that change has to be hinged on intensification alone. This is a multifaceted problem that requires a multifaceted solution. And as stakeholders, as a community, I think we all can come together and look at it from a very sort of, what is the strategic vision for Bronte? And then look at all of these initiatives, be it the growth review, um, the review of Lakeshore Road West, the Oakville Master Harvest Plan, is it all as conduits coming into the sort of strategic vision of what Bronte is? And if we are going to hinge the fact that we need um, intensification alone, we don't feel that this is going to address the needs of what is really defined and what's needed to be the catalyst in the area. If we look at the way um, commerce is moving forward today, you can see that the, the Brawny Village Mall, indeed the downtown in Oakville, is coming under threat from the emergence of e-commerce. And intensification alone wouldn't be, be the answer to that. We really do need to revisit this as uh, stakeholders coming together to build consensus and figure out what is, the, what is the strategic plan and how do we take a multifaceted plan towards producing the stimulus and getting a really good vision for the area. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thornborough. Questions for Ms. Thornborough? Councillor Chenna. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I guess I just need a little bit of clarification. Um, you said that you support four to six stories, but then not along the main street because of that tunnel, so are you, or tunnel look or, uh, on Lakeshore Road West. So, are you suggesting further setbacks or along that strip? to decrease height? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused. So there, there are several different permissions being um, put forward in the report along Main Street and, and some of the side streets. So I think along the, the core is, is two to four with up to six with bonusing. And I do believe that there's, there's advocation for increased bonusing beyond that point because there's, there is um, some views that there's, uh, there isn't financial viability up to six. So we have an independent study that says there is. And so we would support only up to a maximum of six. 
Um, but really, at, at the end of the day, we support an MU1, which is two to four along the main street. Councillor O'Meara. Thanks very much, uh, Shelley, for coming in and, and bringing the residents' comments uh, to us here. Um, I'd like to just um, ask you a little bit more about the soft transition uh, term, um, because um, I guess, first of all, what does that mean to you? And then second of all, if on the north side you're okay with up to six stories, what, what does that look of a soft transition uh, mean to you? So the soft transition, right now we have these directions for sovereign, which would possibly cater to the applications going forward for sovereign and East Street. And those would increase the, um, the zoning bylaws for those, for those particular areas. If you look at the current zoning that's in place right now for the adjacent lands, those are for um, um, single or duplex dwellings. So we're talking about a soft transition that mirrors the zoning for, a, for immediately adjacent lands in the area. So it's not a height thing per se, it's a density thing? Is that what the transition is? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Shelley, for joining with us again this evening. Uh, does your board, as a general principle, believe in the need or the necessity of, of upgrading the standards of modernization, economical, retail, and all that sort of stuff in the originally old Bronte area? Would you like to reframe your, your question? Pardon me? Could you reframe your question for me, Councillor Robinson? Does your board believe in the need and the importance of upgrading the standards of the economical area of Bronte compared to what it used to be like and now the, the need for uh, greater development and more modernization and, uh, and all that sort of good stuff that seems to be the, coming with the passing of time? Yes, as a board, we do believe that revitalization is, is very key for the area, and we do support it. And I do believe I mentioned that in the opening statement. Um, we do also believe that the revitalization and development needs to come in tandem with the, the concept of maintaining a, a lakeside feel within Bronte. Am I answering your question? Yes, you did, uh, Shelley. I'll have something else to say maybe a bit later on, and you may become involved in my further conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Councillor Hill. Shelley, 24.8.2. Specifically, what is it you don't like about it? Oh, which slide? 24.8.2. Okay. So if you look at this provision, maybe I should go back so that it's available for the public. So if you look at this provision right now, it looks to amend it as it, as it's, as it reads, so that the town may allow increases of building height without amendment to this, to this plan with two stories to the west of East Street and four stories to the east, to the east of East Street striking out supported by a transportation impact analysis which confirms that the additional development will not adversely impact the transportation network. What part don't you like? Well, the part that we do not, we do not support is, is that the additional bonusing may, may go forward without amendment to this plan and does not require transportation impact analysis. Okay, but the, the bonusing is, the is the bonusing bonus was, was allowed before. It's they stroke it out and then they spelled it out again. But it, that the bonusing didn't change for the two story, correct? The bonusing no, this bonusing um, recommendation hasn't changed from before. Got it. Yeah. However um, it was contingent on looking. It was contingent on looking at transportation 
to ensure that the level of development did not impact the area. So by striking that out, that provision falls away. Okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying. It could be it could be a positive. It could be a positive. It could be a positive. It could actually help get more people to that area. In terms of bonusing? Yes. Yep. Yeah. There's, okay. I mean, you, you definitely could look at it that way, but I think it is incumbent on us to look at it from a very um, responsible way to say, um, have we done the analysis to, to, to indicate that that particular area can support the level of development that is being proposed? Okay. But you're not against the bonusing? That's what I want to understand. Well, I think the two work hand in hand. I mean, if, if we've done the impact study and it has been determined that that level, um, that level of, in of intensification can be supported, and if there's public support behind it, um, that is its own process, I do believe. However, to, be, to remove this, um, to remove Part B, from this um, from this provision means that we don't go through that 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 process, which um, would indicate an analysis to see if that intensification okay. is Thank indeed. Thank you. At the appropriate time, I'll ask staff for clarification on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thornborough, for your information and your answers. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The uh, next delegation. The next delegation is Lindsay Thomas. Welcome, Ms. Thomas. Council looks forward to your information. Good evening, Mayor Burton, town councillors, staff, and fellow residents. My name is Lindsay Thomas, and I live at Marine Drive and East Street. My neighbour, Maria, and I attended this meeting last night, and she was very disappointed when she didn't get to speak then, as she had a prior engagement for tonight. Maria has been a resident of Bronte for several years and loves where she lives. She is an active senior citizen who believes in standing up for what is important for the greater good. She is passionate about politics, justice, and democracy, having grown up in the 1950s and 60s in Yugoslavia. I am reading her letter on her behalf. Residents are invited here for consultation and to give our input about proposed developments in our neighborhoods a few times in the last year and a half. What I had seen and heard from more than 90% of the residents is that the way developments are proposed is too much, too fast, and too soon. Nobody was against new developments. Today we came to give our input regarding the amendments that the Town of Oakville has proposed. They are actually allowing developers to build more and higher. This idea, I believe, was passed down from the provincial government decades ago. I remember seeing on local Oakville television Mr. L. Elgar and Mr. Kevin Flynn as councillors for Glen Abbey at that time, saying that Oakville didn't need an extensive, such an extensive overhaul of the water system as the province was pushing for it. However, the provincial government seemed to have that agenda even then and succeeded in pushing it the other way. In Mr. McGinty's time, there was an idea to push for more density in towns and cities in order to save the green belt. Now, according to Neptis, even the green belt is defined so vaguely that developers can find loopholes and developments can, sp can spring up over, all over small towns. If our provincial government is so relentless in pushing for density and developments, drastically changing people's lives, maybe Ontarians should go find out what the Green Party and NDP can offer as British Columbia did. This problem of overdevelopment is very much widespread. I believe that it is a consequence of rules and regulations that our provincial government brings forward. The trouble is that the majority of those laws and regulations don't respect laws of nature. They tend to put prices on everything that surrounds us, and I believe that there should be a limit. For example, water should be a fundamental right for co and common good, not for sale, at least not in the way corporations like Nestle is doing. It is the sale that benefits the very few, and it is a loss for many. That is why the number of middle-class people is getting smaller, and the number of millionaires bigger, but not as fast as the number of people living below the poverty line. The common denominator for all those problems, as I see it, is we are losing our democratic control. This is exactly how those amendments came. 
like a slap in the face to a majority of Bronte residents. To deny those amendments, it will take just a few flips of a pen from the responsible people in the town of Oakville who propose them. More specifically, as I understand for the corner of Lakeshore Boulevard and East Street, those amendments will allow a developer to erect a building at least 10 stories high instead of a maximum four to six. If and when that 10 story tower is built, no bonusing permission will be capable of lowering that wall its shadow, its noise, the traffic, pollution, and possible damage to an underground garage in the neighborhood. It will stay there as a gateway to Bronte Village and a witness for democracy denied for Bronte residents in 2017. I still believe though that as we as residents should take responsibility by showing up here at Oakville Town Hall in large numbers saying, our trust, saying to our trusted representatives that we are ready to defend our de democratic rights. For those badly needed changes in the orientation of the economic system that will respect nature, eventually define who or what is not for sale, we as residents and voters will desperately need every capable heart and mind in, Oak in Ontario to be alert and active. There is strength in numbers, so please join in and say no to the proposed amendments. Thank you. Thank you for bringing Maria's information. I, I doubt we can question you about her. Not really, no. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. I beg your pardon? I think she's going to delegate on her own behalf. Oh. Now. Are you also delegating on your own behalf? Yes, I am. Would you like to go now? Sure. Well, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Burton, town councillors, staff, and fellow residents. My name is Lindsay Thomas, and I live at Marine Drive and East Street. I grew up in the Folgerwood neighborhood in Oakville, and I honestly don't remember much of Bronte Village from my childhood. I learned more from my neighbors once I moved there, many of whom are lifelong Bronteites. The memories that do come to mind most of my experience, however, are kind of random. The wooden steps leading up to the ice cream parlor, and the tall ships that our family friend's tugboat pulled in and out of the harbor. It strikes me, though, that those that those memories of the wooden steps and the tall ships are of things that are not only from a few decades ago for me, but are elements of the true olden days when people didn't have to rely on high-tech motors and machines and refrigerated coolers in a large grocery store at the end of a massive parking lot in order to enjoy the simplicity of life. For me, having also lived in downtown Toronto, moving to Bronte Village was a bit like going back in time, and that's a good thing. People move slower, and not simply because of the highlighted demographic here. They make eye contact, they look at the world around them more than at their device, they still sleep in on Sunday, and when they do get up, they enjoy the views of nature on a walk. I believe what makes Bronte the gem, which everyone refers to it as, is the sleepy village atmosphere. Gandhi once said there is more to life than increasing its speed. That's not to say that Bronte should be forgotten, it does need some appropriate help to boost it. What I'm wondering is, why can't Bronte Village have the best of both worlds? Everyone, even millennials, if you can believe it, gravitate toward nostalgia. If a person begins to lose their memory as they age, it's usually what they did last week that is the first thing to be forgotten. They almost always remember nostalgic pieces of their childhood. It's something I've noticed about friends and anyone, really, that once we move out on our own and start paying those hefty bills, we want to hang on to the familiar, the innocence in life. Every generation seems to go through that experience too. There is no reason why Bronte Village cannot maintain that and capture it for years to come. Some of the most feel-good movies are set in small neighborly towns with older buildings. Niagara-on-the-Lake and small town Canada has streets lined with low-rise buildings that all look over a century old. Disney World has even created a main street to resemble the same. They both receive loads of activity every year. Granted, they have a few other things going for them too, Niagara with its wine, and well, we're not about to build a roller coaster in anyone's backyard here, 
but we do have several events and ongoing elements and attractions throughout the year. Bronte Village draws tourism and new residents, both full and part-time. This past summer, the Oakville Wind Orchestra held their weekly, weekly concerts at the Gazebo Cum Band Shell at the harbour. The audience was polled a few times and it was agreed that it was a more inviting venue than past years. No offence to Coronation Park, but their inland lake this year turned into Bronte's musical gain. The evening seemed to attract more people simply because of the orchestra's proximity to the harbour and the public. Those other destinations, Niagara and Disney World, can be used as models. The initial reason people go to Niagara may be the wine and theatre, but the reason they stay and return are the picturesque main and side streets. I don't think all of it is original to its place either, or that restorations haven't been made to update yet preserve. There is no reason why Bronte cannot have new builds that draw on the past for their exterior in terms of height and entry. After all, what is more inviting? A gener generic glass and steel front which overpowers the sidewalk with its several stories and casts shadows onto passers-by, prompting them to hurry along when they only see a reflection in the store window instead of what the store has to offer? Or a facade built with bricks, actual bricks and mortar on a human scale with design of a few stories, a sloped roof, a gradual recessed entry, and focal shop windows. A facade that creates the character and vision of heritage that the livable Oakville plan says it strives for. Keeping with the human factor, many people talk about how it's much nicer to talk to a person than a machine. And if you're talking to a person, which is more inviting? Someone with expression and character inviting you into a conversation? Or someone who barely says anything and presents a dull blank exterior? Built form can and does have the same impact. It is also much easier to remember landmarks than names and addresses. Instead of Business A in Unit 5 on the third floor at 2461 Lakeshore Boulevard East, the cool place in the short red brick building with white trim next to the pet store is actually easier to remember because of the choice of visual detail which creates a picture and a map in a person's mind instead of forcing them to pile more numbers into their head. Some people may think that Bronte can only be vibrant with businesses if building, buildings are built taller, thus attracting more residents. However, it has been seen that the increase of residential units in recent years has not had much impact on business. It is also known from various studies in other cities that an increase in building height is actually detrimental to the vibrancy of the area. The taller the building, the more detached from the community the person becomes, simply because the street is so far away from their initial view from a window. There is nothing that they can see to attract them and draw them in. Instead, they get in their car in the underground parking garage and drive to their destination. Interestingly, I have noticed some shops that have come to Bronte Village in the past few years that are more handmade and craft-oriented, more eclectic than in the past. It might be a sign that people want to have a simpler life and return to what is most important, to be hands-on, to look out their window and see a great view with the uniqueness of nature or a shop instead of a towering monolith. If downtown Oakville and Kerr Village have low-rise buildings with unique shops and they attract businesses, then why can't Bronte Village have the same? Society is continually searching for the fountain of youth for space and freedom of mind and surroundings. But judging by the sentiments expressed here last night and listening to the residents of Bronte Village, we don't have to look very far. We already have it. All we have to do is not focus on the greed and look to refine the good. Thank you. Thank you very much for your information. Questions? Councillor O'Meara. Lindsay, thank you very much for coming. In, uh I remember back uh, the first time that the development proposal came forward next to your building. We, we met and we've been speaking about development in Brawny ever since. Um, and, and you've always spoke very eloquently. I, I guess what I'd, I'm really asking is what is it that you're asking us to do tonight? Is it to deny all the amendments as the individual you read the letter to as well? Or what is it specifically that you would like this council to do tonight? Um, I think similarly to what the BVRA has stated too is that um, just going higher 
isn't necessarily going to solve the problem of businesses and and um, getting pedestrian traffic and all that kind of thing. Um, I think there has to be a different approach and I think that um, instead of just simply building up with modern day structures and all that, we have to create an atmos a better atmosphere that will not only attract people, residents, tourism, that kind of thing, but also the businesses too. So that's why I likened things to Niagara on the Lake and other places. Um, and I appreciate that, and I, I, I think many of us here agree with you. There's not one silver bullet here for the problems that many of our communities face. Would you uh, agree, though, that um, that an increase in population uh, or an increase in density uh, might help some aspect of the issues facing Brawny, or uh, or not? Um. Well, if the object is the object, objective is to get more people into Bronte, to live in Bronte, then there has to be some increase in density. But I, I don't believe that it should be in the places necessarily that people are looking, that people are focused on, like um, East and Lakeshore, for instance. Um, it, it just seems it's not very welcoming to have a tall building on the corner, no balance whatsoever, and then call it a gateway. There, there are many other ways that you can do a gateway that are more approachable and welcoming. So your primary focus then is on that, on the proposal of, of six plus, uh, four for bonusing in particular on the site at Lakeshore and East then, is that fair to, to say? There's that, and there's also the opposite corner of mm -hmm. Lakeshore and East, um, because that has been focused as the gateway, even though it's not straddling Lakeshore, it's straddling East Street. Um, and I think just generally along Lakeshore Boulevard, um, going super high isn't the best way to go about it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Lindsay, thanks very much for coming, but my question, Your Worship, was really of staff. Well, let's see if there's any more questions for Ms. Thomas, and okay. then we'll turn to staff. Councillor Elgar. Thank you for coming. A question regarding uh, number of stories. How many stories do you think are the right number? Well, I'm not a professional in the business of master planning or anything, but um, I think as it is now, there are buildings that are one story and two stories, and then some that are three plus a steep roof to have their uh, rooftop terrace concealed. Um, that, and I, I think there are some other four stories down, on, it's like south of Lakeshore on Bronte Road as well. And it just seems to have a more personal feel to it, a more human scale, instead of something that you would find in a big city. So, so you're thinking n not much more than four stories or five stories or above the tree line, is that? Uh... Actually, it's funny that you say that because um, I, always uh, growing up and, and even now too, I would not like to live in a place that had buildings taller than the tree line, really, because I think that um, it creates the balance that we need. It's so. interesting you're saying that. Uh, professor uh, Terry Fowler, who was a professor at Atkinson College with York University, and that was exactly where he, his writings were all about, you shouldn't be above the tree line. And so I find that interesting. I thank you for coming. Thank you. Could you could you help us understand? Uh, I understand that from the questions that you're concerned about that development proposal at um, East and Lakeshore. Where do you live in relation to that? Next door. In what building? Uh, the one that's directly south, facing like on Marine Drive. It's facing East Street, though. We're the ones with the underground parking garage that could fall apart. 
Um, what floor do you live on? Seven. Seven. And uh, Maria lives on ten. And other people higher up in the building still have an issue with the, the proposal height of height. For How the, high is the building? The, um, it's 17 floors altogether okay. mm -hmm. with eight foot ceilings. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. That was our last listed delegation. Let's see if we can find some more. Uh, yes, sir, would you come forward and identify yourself and share your information with Council? Yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Councillors, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, my wife, uh, who is in the, in the uh, public gathering here today, we have lived in, in Bronte since uh, 1980. Um, and most recently, for the past year, we live on Nelson Street, just north of, uh, just north of Lakeshore. Can you all hear me okay? Actually, I was hoping to hear your name. Oh, sorry, it's Chris Little. Thank you. I did, I did write, write a letter to you. Thank you very recently. much, Mr. Little. Um, both Jan and I, my wife and I, we were very involved, along with many other Bronte residents, in, in putting the Liverpool Oakville plan together as far as it um, relates to Bronte. There were many public meetings and there were quite extended work sessions that went on to produce that plan. And we were have very happy and proud to contribute to that. That's really why I'm here today to speak with you. Uh, I think the idea of bonusing and putting that into a plan without reference back to the residents that put that plan into effect to begin with is a very slippery slope. You've heard from the two presentations today that there is a real concern amongst residents that what we're about to do if we proceed with this is create a tunnel through Bronte which is to my mind is 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 a dreadful thing to do we do not see that in downtown Oakville we don't see that on Kerr Street yes there are of course instances where there is a building that's higher than the two to four um, levels that were instituted as part of the plan, the, as, it, as it refers to, to, to Bronte. And there may, be need, there may be a good plan that comes forward in the future where to go beyond the two to four would make sense, depending upon what, what uh, facilities are part of that building, what its architectural look is, and so on and so forth. But to go forward and move away from the Liverpool uh, Oakville plan for Bronte and put in a blanket proposal for higher buildings is, is not the way forward. As I mentioned, we have been part of Bronte for 37 years now. One of the worst things in our lifetime here was the apartment building that was put in place on the southwest corner of Bronte and Lakeshore which completely cut off the access to the lake for everybody. There used to be an old uh, boat building site there. But with that, with that building that was put in on that corner, there are shadows there all day long, and it completely blocks off any access to the lake, any views to the lake. And if we go forward with a height change on Lakeshore Road in Bronte, that's what's going to happen again. And it'll be there forever and a day for, for our children and your children. So, please do not put this plan into effect, this change in plan into effect. Keep it where it is. Keep it so that the people in the, in, in, in the, in the area can have a good say going forward on how our, on how our community looks in the future. This is kind of an off-the-cuff report to you because, unfortunately, I left my notes behind. In this. <laughs> so, so this is really just going from memory. But please, keep the plan as it is. Thank so, you. Were, were you aware of the public consultations? So every five years, the, 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 the official plan of a town is supposed to be reviewed. Did you come along and participate in the many public meetings around this five-year review of the official plan? 
I'm not sure when that took place, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Sunderland, could you put that pyramid chart back up? We, my wife and I have made it a, a, a policy to come to meetings of the council as and when they, they apl apply to, to Bronte, but we don't come to everyone, no. Well, I, I just want to... The couple of things you said that I'd, I'd like to, to discuss with you. The first I thought we'd deal with the consultation. These were the, the times over the last two years that we had the public meetings. And it's possible that that you know you didn't notice them or whatever. But um, the product of all these meetings is before us now. Uh, the the staff didn't dream this up on their own. There was public demand for these things, and and so I'm just needing to understand if you participated in that. I certainly came to some of the open houses that were held. Um, I, I couldn't honestly, uh, I couldn't honestly answer whether I, whether we attended any of those other meetings. Okay. Now I, I know and love Bronte uh, quite a lot. I go there more than I probably should, and in my mind's eye, as you were talking about that apartment building, every year I walk in a parade past that building, and we we get about a half a block's worth of distance past that building and there's a site of the harbor all of a sudden opens up and I and if I go across the street from a little f closer to the intersection I can see the lake and the harbor and I I confess that I I go to Plank and Yolanda more than is good for a man <laughs> and I go there because I enjoy the sight of the harbor and the lake um, I'm were you perhaps stating that all side of the lake was cut off for dramatic effect rather than, you know, super accuracy? I'm not sure if I'm fully understanding you, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, forgive me if, if, if I get this wrong. Um, certainly, as you go down Bronte to where, the, to where the Marine Drive is, yes, it all opens up. But the building that I'm referring to, which is sort of kitty corner on, on, the, on the southwest side, well, I, I know to, the building. To, to, to my mind, is it's just a gate. It's 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 a it's a great big wall that um, cuts off cuts off the view to the lake. I grant it. It blocks the lake from that spot. Yes, it does. I totally understand that. I'm I'm fond of the uh, Heritage Waterfront Park, and I enjoy the sight of the lake there too. I'm. I'm struggling with the concept that, um, you know, the lake is being cut away. But I guess that's uh, a problem I'll have to resolve when we come to, to deliberate on this. But I think, Mr. Mayor, what we're, what we're looking at tonight, if I understand it correctly, is, is to take away the standard of two to four stories along, along Lakeshore and allow this almost a blanket policy of, of increasing it to four to six. And that's what I'm arguing against. I was just trying to use that, that instance of the, of the southwest corner as, as an example of what can happen yes. if, if we don't monitor each and every building that goes up there. Okay. Thank you very much for the conversation. I, I wanted to make sure you understood that staff didn't invent this out of whole cloth, that there was uh, extensive consultation with the public and many representations from the public to the effect that they wanted more people working and living on the village main street. And that was certainly part and parcel of the livable Oakville plan as it applied to Bronte, as, as, you, as you well know. Um, we have heard instances tonight of presentations tonight of groups and people saying that what we don't want is to create a tunnel in, in, along Bronte, in, along the lakeshore. And my feeling certainly is that if we, if we put this plan change into effect, we're opening the gate to that and not giving very much in the way of protection. Well, the tunnel epithet was originally used to describe the 
the canyons of Manhattan. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure four stories really gets to that standard, but I take the point that that you don't want an increase in height. Councillor Lischina has a question for you. Thank you, Mr. Little. I'm not sure uh, you're wishing to. I'm going to ask Mr. Little the question, and perhaps if, uh, staff can comment after or at an appropriate time. Mr. Little, um, yes, we have heard about this tunneling effect from a number of people. What is your thought about having the north side of Lakeshore with the height versus north and south? Well, um, I would come back to you in terms of what do we see on Lakeshore in, in, in downtown Oakville. Um, there are some buildings that are beyond four, but very few. And I, I happen to live immediately north of, north of Lakeshore. So um, uh, from a personal standpoint, if buildings are going to be six stories, then what I'm faced with looking out of, of my home is, is, is a wall. I think the previous uh, young lady who spoke mentioned about keeping heights to the tree line. And four to six stories isn't going to do that. Councillor O'Meara has a question for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Little. I appreciate you coming uh, and speaking here. And um, this one thing that I've learned in, in, in my brief time here is the holistic nature of looking at these plans. And one thing we reviewed last night that I'm wondering if you're familiar with is the um, uh, urban design guidelines. Did you have a chance to look at that in the report as well? No. Um, well, you, you, may, uh, you may be happy to know that this tunnel effect in the urban design guides that we spoke about last night includes block breakups where there's segments in. So there can be patio seating areas and there's the, it, it's more of a jagged edge rather than a straight, straight wall all the way down. Um, so, so I hope that might address some of the tunneling issues that we've heard from a couple uh, residents tonight. But um, are you familiar with bonusing though as well? I'm, I'm a neophyte. I'm not, I'm not a planner. I'm just, just a member of the I'm not too far away from you as well. Don't <laughs> worry. I, the, the thing about the bonusing is that it is not guaranteed. The bonusing has to be approved by this council here. So right now it could be four stories. We're talking about four to six, but there's no guarantee that it can be six. So I hope that you will take some solace in the fact that because we can bonus up to six, it doesn't mean it's going to be six, but it means it needs to be good planning, and that's up to the judgment of this council to decide what that is. So I, I hope that, that that will ease some of your concerns. Yes, I appreciate that. No problem. I appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor Mira. Thank you, Mr. Little. Thank you. Um, any other volunteers? Yes, ma'am. Would you please come and introduce yourself and share your information with council? My name is Jan Van Hooksloot, and I'm a long-time resident in Oakville, probably 33 or plus years. Um, I just wanted to support some of the ideas tonight, because I don't live in Bronte, but I, I live in Glen Abbey, but I did live near Coronation Park. So I've lived here long enough with little kids that um, we used to bike um, to Bronte all the time for the ice cream store that doesn't exist anymore. That's, I think, replaced by an apartment building. Um, what I wanted to, to sort of support, I, I, th I think what all these people are saying, and it's the same for me, I don't go down to Bronte as much anymore because parking is an issue. Um, we also get a lot more people in from outside of Oakville, which is great on the one hand, but it also means that it's less accessible. Like downtown's becoming like that. I remember a time you could go down on a Sunday in downtown Oakville and have no problem finding parking. Um, that apartment building is a blight. It's turned me off wanting to go all the time because you brought the big city right down to the lake. It's sort of, for me, is kind of like uh, when you go along the QEW and you see all those condominiums right next to the lake so we can't see the lake going towards Toronto. And I think what these people are saying, and certainly that's my thing, is you go to Bronte and it's a quaint village. That's what we like about it. I can see the dilemma that some um, businesses have difficulty drawing people in, so I, I certainly see that development there is important and having the ability to bring people in from that perspective. But I think when everybody hears development, whether it's three stories, four stories, whatever, is we don't want all these modern buildings, plunk, 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 is having the character like Niagara on the Lake where you keep that sense of village 
That's what makes Bronte attractive. That's why people want to go down there. And if you think about it, although there are apartment buildings there, and frankly, all the way around Oakville, Oakville up until all the develop north, development north has been very pleasant, actually. You're not hit in the face by an apartment building. You can actually ride your bike all the way down the lake, down to Bronte, and there's apartment buildings on Marine Drive. There's even high-density townhouses along there, probably out of some of our um, economic bracket, but they're tasteful and they're not in your face. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's what we're all looking for, is that if you're going to develop, keep the character of the place, by all means, you know, rejuvenate things if possible, like renovate old buildings. It's kind of sad we don't have Bill Hill's old ice cream shop or something that looks like it, um, as opposed to something really modern. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's what people really want to see happen, is not to interfere with the flavor of the place. And if you put building, 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 whether they're three, four, or whatever, bang, 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 and even in clusters, because clusters, there's clusters north of Dundas, clusters, they're walls right smack on the edge of the sidewalk. And that kind of turns people off. It doesn't have that um, old village sense. Have you? I'm, I'm, and you're going to ask me, have I looked at this, that, and the other thing? No, I have not. No. I just go down with my bicycle all the way from Glen Abbey. <laughs> I, I'm only curious whether you're aware of the ice cream shop on Brony Road that's only two stories and a very <laughs> quaint front. But yes, there's, there are ice cream stores around. It's not the same as mounting those, the going into that store with Bill Hill. You know, when your little kids went down and there, there was this quaint little old ice cream store, it's not the same. It's, it, it really isn't. And like, sure, there's also Baskin Robbins down by Kerr Street, but it's not the same. And so all I'm saying is that I think people, if you can find a way of melding the old with the new and keeping character, is what people are looking for. I think so, people are looking for that all over Oakville, not just in Bronte. So the problem is we couldn't keep Bill Hill alive permanently. Hey, you could have kept Bill Hill's place alive, though. You could. Uh, <laughs> I, I, anyway, I just wanted to support them because, I mean, I don't go to Bronte as much anymore. Um, and, you know, and, and I, that apartment building turns me off. The front lakeshore is beautiful, but I used to love that street. And, um, you know, it was a great place to go. And now I feel like, I don't know, I don't know how many people live in that building, but it feels like a lot of people live in that building. When did that building go in? Uh, what, five years ago or more? I don't know. I've been down there for a while. At, I thought we were talking about the corner of Lakeshore and Brawny Road, the southwest. No, I think you're talking about that one down by the lake. Am I mistaken? Not mistaken? Right down, right down Bronte Road, right by the lake. Oh, okay. Well, I'm also talking about the one that's right down by the lake. Because if that's in keeping with what you're planning on building, it's, it doesn't do anything for anybody. That, that's not in keeping what's before council. Okay, just throwing it out there. Thank you very much for uh, Any questions? No. taking the opportunity. Okay. Any other volunteers? I'll confine it to table then. Uh, Councillor you know, Robinson? I, Would you I'm like to the, ask a I'm question? I have the opinion that Sar uh, Ann Sargent wants to delegate. Oh. Well, all righty. I'll ask again. Any other volunteers? Is Ann listed? No. Ms. Sargent, you're welcome to come down and delegate. Thank you, Your Worship, members of council, staff, and our community assembled here. Um, we're on record last night. We're the Bronte BIA representing 200 members, business members. And we're on record last night as saying we need height and density, but they need not be dirty words. We want, uh, we share the view of everybody who's spoken, that we love the character, want to maintain it. We want to, we don't want to destroy what's precious. So we're on the same page there. But I'm listening to um, the comments about the ice cream shop and about uh, the old shops and so on. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the, those buildings are falling down. Those buildings are in dire need of demolition and our businesses are suffering with leaky roofs they have no, no floor space they can't hold enough inventory to make money and honestly I, I love niagara on the lake too but when you're dealing with millions of people going to niagara falls and niagara on the lake you cannot compare 
we ha already have uh, apartment buildings and Ennis Claire and tall buildings. As we said last night, we have a limited footprint with the lake on one side. Where are we going to grow? Two stories doesn't make it. Six stories doesn't make it. We still disagree with the Barry Lines report, but that's old news. And it comes down to dollars and cents, not in a way to destroy the village, but we need to attract investment to build the character, the feel of the village, and to make to keep it vibrant. Our BIA, all of these business members pay uh, an extra tax an extra levy on their tax to, do, to help us do marketing, tourist promotion because we're a tourism district, uh, to do marketing, to do advocacy, to do Canada Day, to do bring in the brawny chairs this summer, to do the brawny heritage trail, to do all, uh, events that we do throughout the year to develop culture, history and the arts in a very limited print, uh, footprint, to put up the flowers and the banners, to deal with, help deal with garbage and keep the place clean. If the businesses aren't surviving, they're going to go out of business. And I'm, as I said last night, we're losing businesses to the competition, to Burlington, to Port Credit. They are eating our lunch. And uh, we need to say we cannot have this gorgeous, vibrant village sustainable without allowing a reasonable return on investment for uh, people who, who want to come in and invest. So I, I, I really, that's really all we have to say. Uh, we've limited areas where we can build to bring in more people, more residents, and we do need more residents. But the businesses, the buildings are shot. They are shot. We need to we need to build new new structures. And I'm not advocating. We're not advocating for skyscrapers or tunneling. But there are many lakeside villages around the world, uh, wherever you go, whether it's uh, Marina del Rey in California, Carmel by the Sea. I mean, that's the Pacific Ocean. And it's, 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 the point is, you need money. To, you need money to develop a destination that's going to attract people. And we've got 2,500 people population within our catchment area, which is very, very small. Now, how are we going to bring in more population? Where are we going to put them? Where are they going to live? So s somehow together, the business side and the resident side, we have to support each other. We have to support each other. Otherwise, we're not going to have a vibrant village. We're going to be uh, like a lot of holidays where businesses close on the weekend or people are away, people are away in the winter. We need people on the street and we need mixed demographics, mixed ages. We need to keep this place hopping, not just go home from the office at five o'clock and, and see no life. So, uh, you know, we really have to make that point for the businesses. And of course, that's our, that's our mandate as the Bronte BIA. And I love Bronte. I've lived in Bronte many, many years on Bronte Road, actually. So I don't want to see it destroyed either, Not, nor do any members of our board. But something's got to give. And right now, what I'm, what I'm hearing, some accommodation from the residents, and thank you, BVRA and all of you in the room. But somehow, we have to find a way to put this together and make it work. Otherwise, it, it's, it's not going to be a good future for Bronnie. And I, I, I just, that's all I have to say. Well, thank you very much for saying it. Um, you said it so well, there may not be a lot of questions. So thank you very much. Um, Councillor Robinson, you indicated earlier that you wanted to ask a question of staff. Is that still true? I, I did, Your Worship. May I do that now? You have the floor. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure which one wants to answer it, but is there any possibility that bonusing could be approved without it becoming a public information meeting issue? Through your worship to Councillor Robinson. So the bonusing permissions that we're proposing are not as of right. That you'd be required to do um, an, a, a, res a rezoning application that would have the public process. In addition, you'd be required to enter into a bonusing agreement um, at the discretion of Council. So the answer is that the public will have every opportunity to become involved in a bonusing application. Absolutely. They'd have to go through the rezoning process. Thank you. Yeah, the, thank you for clarifying that, Councillor. Uh, Ms. Childs, the public isn't aware necessarily that a zoning application has a public process. So 
it's good on the councillor to uh, emphasize thank that. You. Um, councillor O'Meara. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Well, um, I would be happy to move this item uh, at the, the appropriate time, and uh, if there are anyone else, but uh, I'll leave that to you. Councillor O'Meara, uh, you're moving the revised motion as before council? Uh, that's correct, sir. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Councillor Elder. Yeah, thank you. I have uh, two questions of staff, and uh, I, I think uh, one of the, one of the uh, people speaking tonight talked about uh, 2482 uh, Section B, and I just want to be clear, I got th they had a feeling that no studies had to be done, and I just wonder if you, it, I know it's completely uh, st stroked out what you're proposing, but the reason for that. It's a hill answer, but yeah. it's redundancy. I, I, I want to hear it from, so that the people understand. Through your worship to the councillor. So I'm looking at Livable Oakville 2864 of the plan. 28 point, 24.8.2. That's the one in Section the amendment, councillor. What I'm looking at is actually my copy of Livable Oakville, which is in a different place under the heading bonusing. So it's the general provisions that apply throughout all of Oakville. And 2864 allows for additional uh, studies to be required when boning is sought, where at it is determined or felt that in infrastructure is inadequate or incomplete. So effectively, there is a that policy already exists in the document, and it's, it's just duplication. That's what I wanted to hear, actually, just so there is clarity on that. The other question I have of staff, and it relates to, and I have the same feeling, Niagara on the lake, what do they have in their official plan that allows them to design buildings, new buildings, to look old? Is there something they have that we could use going forward? Uh, through your worship to Councillor Algar, it's my understanding it's a cultural heritage district. Heritage conservation district, I mean. That's what it is, eh? So even though they're not even in the downtown, if you go out a little bit where they have uh, uh, buildings they've just built, and they look beautiful and they're, they're old. So we would have to do something in the Bronte area to enforce something like that? We would have to put it under uh, a heritage conservation district and develop guidelines specific for that area. I thank you very much for that. Thanks. The only other thing we'd have to do is move Bronnie closer to the falls. <laughs> Councilor O'Meara. And, sir, Your Worship, I, I would like to speak to this motion briefly if, uh, if it's the appropriate time. Councilor O'Meara, you have the floor. <clears throat> well, once again, I, I do want to thank staff very much for all their work. Uh, it was a yeoman's work at, at times. I want to thank you for your work with the residents of St. Anne's Court. I know that they were, uh, they had much consternation every five years when this came up and I think we were on the right side of that. The difficulty here um, continues to be the tension between the urban structure uh, and, and the residents and, and I think we've, we've got a mix. Uh, I, I was once told uh, if both sides aren't happy, you've probably landed right where you need to be. Um, if both sides are happy, somebody's gonna be upset. Um, so I, 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 I understand the frustrations on both sides. Um, I do want to thank you as well for recognizing in the foresight aspect um, that there may, need, uh, there may need to be a time when we look forward at OPA uh, amendments if we're not getting what we think we need to get here. And, and I think that's a way that has addressed uh, many of the business community's concerns with uh, the Lions report which, which came out. And I think uh, the foresight there is, is, is uh, um, very, uh, very rewarding and, and I thank you for that. And again, I, I, I also think that the bonusing and allowing council to control the bonusing uh, on this item and, and really look at how bonusing is used. And I think one thing we need to remember, if you give permissions to build a height, what you will get are tall, big, rectangular buildings and it will block out everything. By having the bonusing, we have control to have setbacks, to have space, to have lighting, to have shadows, to, to, to have creative design builds that help us keep control of what those buildings look like on the streetscape. So uh, there is, is a, a little bit less of certainty, but we have more control over that aspect. And, uh, and for that, I think uh, leaving it in council's hands to understand at what point we get to decide what the look of the main street is, is a very important uh, step for, for council. So I want to thank you again. I want to thank my council colleagues and I'm happy to move the item. Thank you, Councillor O'Meara. Any other discussion? Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, 
And thank you, Councillor Romero, for your comments and uh, all your hard work, along with the others that were on your review committee. Uh, this, I think, is my seventh official plan review over the years, and uh, this is the first time we've had the, the extraordinary uh, ability to use our councillors as a subcommittee to bring this forward to you the way that it's come forward. And I'm impressed with the work that they did and the results that they've achieved. And when I, when, when I first got on council, I was one of those that said, oh no, we can't touch Bronte, it's got to stay the way it is. We can't do anything about it. It's Bronte and it's going to save this little fishing village and, uh, and uh, don't dare change it. I've changed my mind, uh, and that's a good thing, I think, because uh, after a while I came to realize that uh, while we can't please everybody all the time, I think uh, Sean alluded to that, we need to make the appropriate changes that kind of fit the design of the new world in Bronte, which needs to happen and make things work better according to the requirement of our executive director and sergeant. And that's what we're doing here this evening. And thank you very much for coming here, everyone. Thank you, Councilor Robinson. Uh, any other discussion? Shall I put the vote? Before I do, I, I'd just like to say on bonusing, I'm pleased to see Bronnie embrace this tool because it's a way to enhance the public realm. And if there's one thing that I've heard a lot of in Bronnie, it's the, the desire to have to pretty up the public realm. And for me, the, the moment in time when the value of bonusing crystallized for me was uh, a few years ago when we were discussing the, the uh, the bonusing payments that had been achieved on Kerr Street. And someone from Bronny, who I won't identify, put up his hand and said, Bronny wanted its share of Kerr's bonusing. And I said, you don't get to have any of Kerr's share of bonusing on projects on Kerr Street. You have to do your own bonusing if you want bonusing. And so we've come a long way. Uh, we've learned a lot. And, uh, and we... I think in other parts of town have proven the value of bonusing, and I think Bronny is going to benefit for a long time from this. And uh, I'm not looking at you, Councillor Robinson. <laughs> so, yes. All, are, all those in favor? Any against? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, everybody. We, we took a long time with that, but I think it was worth it. Now, Madam Clerk, shall we go to number... Seven. Number seven, there it is. So council, number seven is the recommendation report for the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision for East Sovereign GP Inc., which is the development proposed at, uh, on Sovereign Street and East Street. And I, I You've, we've had some indirect references to that by uh, Councillor O'Meara earlier this evening. We have at least one registered delegation, and we have a presentation from Paul, uh, I thought from Paul Barrett, but it looks like it's from Charlie McConnell. Yes. Mr. McConnell, we are all yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Council. Uh, this presentation will provide a brief overview of the recommendation report, which can be found on page 257 of tonight's agenda. So the subject lands are located at the southwest corner of Sovereign Street and East Street and are occupied by four detached dwellings and two semi-detached dwellings. The application are originally sought to develop this site with 20 townhouse units on a private road, but as a result of staff comments and the input received from the public through the public consultation process, the applicant revised the application, which includes the front yard of the townhouses fronting uh, E Street being increased from one meter to three meters, and this was necessary to achieve safe sight lines. It, uh, the westerly side yard of the internal townhouses increased from 1.7 meters to three meters. This was necessary to provide adequate separation distance and a vegetative buffer. Uh, the easterly side yard uh, of the internal townhouses increased from 0.36 meters to 1.8 meters 
uh, and this was necessary to accommodate an internal walkway and provide for safe access. And the rear lane uh, setback increased from zero meters to 0.75 meters to meet current zoning standards and provide for separation distance. Um, and this screen just illustrates the, the various changes to the, the plan. So these changes have also resulted in a decrease in the rear yard setback from seven uh, meters to six meters, and to decrease in the front yard setback along Sovereign Street from 4.5 meters to three meters uh, for certain por portions of the facade. This, re this resulted in a reduction of the number of units from 20 down to 19. And these circles just illustrate the various uh, areas where changes were made. So the subject lands are located within the Bronte Village growth area and are designated as low density residential. The applicant is seeking to redesignate the lands to a medium density residential designation as illustrated on this slide in front of you. Uh, you just heard, uh, and this council just adopted, the uh, Bronte Village Growth Area Official Plan Amendment, which included the same designation of the lands from low to medium density residential, as illustrated on the uh, slide at the b bottom right. So the Bronte Village Growth Area is one of the areas of town which is intended to accommodate the majority of intensification. While the subject lands are located outside of the Bronte Village Main Street District, where development is primarily focused, the livable Oakville plan provides that the lands on the south side of Sovereign Street shall function as a transitional area to the stable residential neighborhood to the north with, with modest intensification. The proposed development as revised provides an appropriate form of intensification within an identified growth area while providing an appropriate transition to the adjacent stable residential community, which will be further advanced as part of the required site plan approval process. With respect to implementation, a site-specific zoning bylaw is proposed, which includes performance standards specific to the site, including building setbacks, restricted building height along public street frontages, landscaping, and amenity areas. The overall integration of this development with the surrounding area will be further advanced through the required site plan approval process, where items such as landscaping, upgrades along the Sovereign and E Street frontages, and the internal site plan will, where, and will be uh, addressed through that site plan process. So in addition to the policy and urban design review of the development application, staff reviewed a number of other items, including the following, as indicated on the slide in front of you. And these are considered the technical uh, aspects of the application. As part of the application, a number of public comments had also been received. Staff have addressed these comments in the staff report through the review of the development application and through revisions to the development application, including building height restrictions along public street frontages and increased setbacks, which will be implemented through the site-specific zoning bylaw. It is expected that the design-related matters will be further advanced through, again, through the required site plan process. Staff are satisfied that the application is consistent with the provincial policy statement and conforms to the growth plan and the regional halt and official plan. Further, the application represents good planning as an, and is consistent with the principles and overall policy direction of the livable Oakville plan. Staff recommends approval of the official plan amendment, the zoning bylaw amendment, and the draft plan of subdivision application subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report and found in Appendix C. And in conclusion, Your Worship, staff put forth the following recommendation for your consideration. Thank you, Thank you uh, Mr. McConnell. Are there questions, <coughs> Council, for planners? Councilor Robinson? Are you looking for a motion? No, I have a re registered delegation, but I'm first polling Council for questions. 
Madam Clerk, I see no questions, so let's call the delegations. Our first delegation is Shelley Thornborough from the Brawny Village Residents Association. Ms. Thornborough, welcome. Good evening, Your Worship. It's been so long. <laughs> we look forward to your information on this file. Thank you, Your Worship, members of council, staff, and members of the public. We're once again delegating to the proposal um, for Sovereign Street and East Street, which was originally 20 stories. And we, we do note that the proposed development has been modified from 20 town, townhouses, uh, pardon me, to 19, with amendments to the sight lines as outlined, um, with setback from, from one to three meters on East Street, amending the uh, western side to the adjacent existing residences, and increasing setbacks internally to accommodate um, negotiation within the site and build form to the visitor parking. We greatly appreciate the modifications that have been put forward in terms of the application as it stands today in response to the concerns we raise for community safety, both within the proposed development area and on E Street, which is negotiated by um, residents within the area and children negotiating the area to school. There is a concern, though, that the proposal as it stands still represents a concern in terms of over-intensification for the site. Uh, especially for a parcel of land that has now been designated from low to medium density. The original OPA stated that this area was under low, um, a low density zoning, which has now been moved forward in terms of the application that's just gone forward in the previous example. But it is adjacent to lands um, that are prim primarily designated for single or duplex dwellings. So this does, um, and the level of intensification, if we look on Sovereign Street just before Nelson, if we look at the level of intensification on those parcel of land, on that parcel of land, and if we use the intensification level at that point, if we translated it to this site, it would, it would indicate intensification of only 12 to 15 townhouses as opposed to 15. And 19. Traffic also still remains a concern for the area and we bring this up in a number of our delegations because there are a number of intersections in Bronte that are classified with, a, with an LOS of 405 which means that we are at a, a, a congestion level in the area and the particular <coughs> site along Lakeshore and East Street is one of those as well. So this definitely, so this is why we do advocate for um, comprehensive traffic studies to ensure that the level of intensification pr proposed for a particular area is in meeting with the needs of the area and that of the community. Whilst we acknowledge the setback concessions, this development is the first of its kind and sets a precedent in the area. And is this the precedent we do want to establish? The intensification level of 19 townhouses is this truly appropriate given that the intensification level in adjacent on, along the street is more appropriately to 12 to 15 and it is adjacent to single and duplex dwellings? Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing your information. Are there questions for Ms. Thornborough? Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. You have another one? Call the next one. The next delegation is Glenn Wellings, the planning consultant for the applicant. Mr. Welling, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Uh, good evening, Your Worship, Council members. I'm um, not sure how to turn this thing on here. Is, is there a button? No? Is it on? Okay, sorry. I was looking for a light. I'm always looking for the light, Your Worship. Uh, <laughs> Uh, good evening, Your Worship, Council Members. My name is Glenn Wellings. I'm planning consultant for the project. Uh, my client, Mr. Wyatt, does send his regrets this evening. He did uh, have some child care obligations. I should let you know he was here three and a half hours last night. Uh, so he <laughs> But thank you for hearing me this evening. Uh, as Mr. McConnell um, did note that we've worked very closely with your planning staff uh, to reach uh, 
to get to this point in the process. And I uh, would like to thank Mr. McConnell for his presentation, but also would like to uh, thank Mr. Barrett for his efforts in the file. He has uh, been very responsive and, and uh, we've had some very good dialogue uh, over the last several months. We have responded positively to uh, all comments received and we have uh, addressed all, concern, all concerns raised. And I can assure you, uh, your worship and council members, that no stone was left unturned in this process. It was very thorough and uh, very positive dialogue in dealing with this application. As Mr. McConnell had mentioned, the uh, setbacks and buffers have been modified and in many respects increased at the, at the request of town staff. And what that has resulted and as a corresponding reduction in, num in the number of townhouse units from 20 to 19 units. Uh, I should also note that the radii for the internal road, the internal private road, has been increased to facilitate uh, garbage pickup, and that was requested by regional staff. So the internal townhouse units will get curbside pickup, uh, and that would avoid uh, garbage bins or garbage pads, which uh, tend to, to be problematic uh, moving forward. The townhouses will provide an attractive design for both frontages and along the public realm, both uh, Sovereign and East Streets. And the more utilitarian, utilitarian elements, uh, visitor parking, uh, transformers, and, and things of that nature will be internal to the site. So they will not be visible from the public realm. And to me, that, that is a positive uh, aspect to this development. The t town's current official plan, Livable Oakville, identifies these lands, identifies the land south of Sovereign Street as a transitional area between the residential to the north and the Brawny Village Main Street commercial to the south. The modifications, as, as noted uh, previously uh, in dealing with the Brawny Village growth area, uh, does reinforce the transitional nature of these lands and does recommend that they be redesignated to medium density residential, which is consistent with the, the applications that are before you. The proposed townhouse development is consistent with both the existing and proposed policy regime um, in, in the livable Oakville plan and the proposed revisions there too. Our client is excited about moving forward with this project in 2018 and tonight is a very important step to get there. In terms of the, just some response to the uh, presentation uh, by the previous delegation, uh, Ms. Thornborough uh, from the Brawny Village uh, Residents uh, Association. Um, in her earlier delegation, she, she mentioned she supports uh, smart, responsible development and supports revitalization. And, and to me, that this application fits that bill. So I'm a little bit concerned with the, the comment about the over, over intensification. And, and the reason I'm concerned about that is, is council may recall that the, the original starting point for my client was, was a proposal for 25 townhouses. Uh, we pre-consulted with town staff, town planning staff regarding the 25 townhouses and town planning staff had recommended as she strongly suggested, that we reduce the number down to 20, which met the medium density criteria, the de density criteria for the medium density designation. So that's uh, 20 has now been reduced to 19. So I can advise council that we are under the density allowable f under the medium density designation. So I, I disagree entirely that this is over intensification. I think it will be a positive development and hopefully it, it spurns more positive redevelopment in, in this area because what you have is you're taking six dwellings. This property, these lands consist of six, six properties with six dwellings that are in a very poor state of disrepair and replacing them with, with 19 fairly high, very high quality uh, luxury townhouse units. So, so to me that is a positive and it is a boost for the immediate neighborhood. So I would ask council to support the recommendations of staff and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. 
Let's see and if there are any. Thank you, sir. Questions for Mr. Welling? Mr. Welling, thank you for thank bringing you. your information. Are there any other members of the public who'd like to volunteer information for Council's consideration on this matter? I'm going to ask Council to make a decision then. Councilor Robinson. I move approval. Thank you, Councilor Robinson. Is there discussion? Councilor O'Meara. I'd just like to say we're, we're often quick to criticize the developers who come in and uh, impose things on our community. And I just would like to compliment uh, Mr. Welling and, and the owner for continuing to work with staff uh, and addressing at every stage through this process the concerns that council had. And I think um, um, it, it's, uh, it's a good mark to recognize when you do good things as well. So thank you for that, sir. And I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you, Councilor Romero. Um, before I call the vote, um, Mr. Simeone, as our planning director, would you or one of your staff like to speak to the little uh, angle we heard about precedent, um, a worry uh, by Ms. Thornborough about a precedent here? And uh, I believe the bookend of that concern was the way Mr. Welling pointed out that, uh, in fact, the OP treats this uh, as a a transition area and and I know that uh, one of you can explain why that keeps it from being a precedent the the piece I'm looking for is about zoning have to having to comply upward to the OP certainly your worship the so as we know the zoning must conform with the official plan and the official plan has the, the additional benefit of identifying the transition areas so we're not less left to interpret or wonder where those boundaries are they're spelled out and their council endorsed. If you're thinking of moving from Sovereign Street to the south, on the north side of Sovereign, you have singles. Then you have this identified transition area, which allows a different form, 30 to 50 units per hectare in the form of townhouses, in this, as is the case here. I believe we come in in around 46 units per hectare. So not at the maximum, higher up though. And as we transition to the south, that's where the Lakeshore would take the br uh, brunt of that density. And as you go south of Lakeshore again, it would transition back down to the singles that exist between there and the lake. So I, I think council's policies are achieved in this regard. And often in planning, there has to be a line. In this case, the line is Sovereign Street. One side of the street is in the growth area and one side isn't. Thank you. I think that's very helpful and I hope it reassures um, uh, people who were concerned about that. Um, the only other piece here that I think might be useful for people to understand is Planning and development move on a very, very slow uh, time. Uh, they, 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 development travels as slow as a glacier. Uh, decisions are made and you don't see the result till 10 or 15 years later. I'm thinking about the way the Brawny Village Mall has turned into this uh, concentration of medium and high density as a result of a, an Ontario Municipal Board order. and. Uh, uh, I've, I was going to mention the year, but I've forgotten. It's so long ago. Does, Doug, do you remember the, the year for that? We're thinking it's at least seven or eight years, Your Worship. Yeah. Thank you. 2012. Thank you, Ralph. So uh, from that, you can see that council is not the only uh, cook in the kitchen. We're, ours is not the only spoon in the pot. And if the legislature ever gets done with third reading and actually does pass Bill 139 to abolish the OMB, I'm still throwing a party to celebrate. So with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. And uh, that is carried unanimously. Thank you, everyone. We can turn now, I believe, to item number eight. And Mr. McConnell. Council, considering the uh, council order, considering the hour and the agenda, um, I would ask if you're satisfied, there are no delegations on this, and I will ask in a moment if there are members of the public here on this matter, but I know you've all read a much lengthier report than a brief presentation by staff to remind you of it would be. So uh, let me see if there are members of the public with information for council on this file. And I'll announce it. It's the proposed removal of a holding provision 
on the Del Ridge Harbor at 42 Lakeshore Road West. It's a fairly routine matter. Councillor Duddick. Your Worship, I'd be pleased to move that, and I'll be also pleased to give you a motion for item 9 as well, leading on to it, given the amount of items. I did. There were none. Vote for 9. I'm not going to do 9 yet. Okay. We're going to do 8. Okay. One thing at a time. Okay. On, on item number 8, <clears throat> Council, how do you plead? All those in favor, raise your hands. Any opposed, raise your hands. I declare it carried. Thank you, Councillor Duddick. Item 9 is in order. You have the floor. Um, I would like to confirm that we proceed with the Ontario Municipal Board appeal on 428 Samford Place. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? And that is carried. And the clerk begs me to check and see, are there any members of the public here with a information on this matter. Sir, do you object to the decision? I assume if you're happy you, you wouldn't delegate, so let us, uh, please identify yourself and your interest. My name is Sean Anand, and excuse my uh, throat is really bad for the last week. Um, we went through the Committee of Adjustment for this particular property and the Committee of Adjustment approved the minor variance. A um, couple of things we wanted to mention was, we did work with the town planning staff and we understood their concerns about massing and uh, we made a few changes which the Committee of Adjustment liked. For example, we moved the house back by about one meter and uh, I'm going to give you some free advice. It's only worth what you pay for it. Because council doesn't agree with what the committee did, council is appealing. And, you're, and if you wish to, you should bring these representations either directly yourself or through your own solicitor to the town solicitor. Um, and and that is, that's really the best procedure for that. And, and I, uh, I mean... You're the you're the appealed party, if you will, and this isn't where we can. This this is really not where we I do see. that. But our town solicitors will be pleased to meet with you or your solicitors, and uh, uh, and the, the council's made clear what its issue is, and it's it's up to you now. The, it's it's over to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number ten is the release of an easement on Charles Bigger Ave, on Charles Bigger Drive, I beg your pardon. And uh, uh, we have no registered delegations, and I will poll the audience in case. But Mark Grant, what would you like to say? Uh, just, uh, again, given that they're both consent items, uh, 10 and 11, uh, we're fine moving those both. All right. Are there members of the public who aren't a direct party in this with information for the council on this matter? I don't see any, and so Councillor Grant is moving item 10, if I understand this correctly. All those in favor? Councillor Grant, your motion carries. As I understand it, Councillor Grant is moving item number 11. Are there members of the public with information for Council on item number 11, which is the assumption of part of Plan 20M657 in the Silwell phase of Oak Park? which I'm not expecting any public uh, reaction to. I see none. Uh, the motion is in order and on the floor. All those in favor? That is carried. That brings us along, believe it or not, to item 12. And this is the public meeting report and draft plan of subdivision for Majestic Edge Estates at 346 362 Lakeshore Road West. And for this, we do have a presentation from Mr. McConnell. And we are, we're all ears, Charlie. Thank you, Your Worship and members of council. So this is a statutory public meeting related to a draft plan of subdivision to permit the development of 19 lots for single detached dwellings. The report can be found on page 311 of tonight's agenda. 
The purpose of tonight's meeting is to obtain any public input related to this application. Uh, no recommendation on this application is being put forth to Council this evening. Staff will return in the future following the comprehensive review of the application with a recommendation report. So the subject lands are located on the south side of Lakeshore Road West, west of Shorewood Place, and a draft plan of subdivision application was submitted to redevelop the site for 19 lots for single detached dwellings fronting onto a new public road. The subject lands are designated as low density residential, a uh, special policy area on Schedule F in the Livable Oakville official plan. The subject lands are also located within a special policy area. Uh, section 26.2.1 of the Livable uh, plan provides that the special policy area is intended to protect the unique character of the area within the town. Due to the special attributes of the large lots and related homes in this special policy area, intensification is to be limited to development which maintains the integrity of the large lots. Densities in the special policy area shall not exceed 10 units per site hectare, notwithstanding the low density uh, residential designation uh, density of up to upwards to 29 units per site hectare. Uh, from a zoning perspective, the lands are currently zoned RL1-0 under the town's comprehensive zoning bylaw, uh, which does permit single detached dwellings. So a number of matters are to be considered and a uh, public information meeting was held on September 19th. Uh, there were six residents that attended that meeting and a complete analysis of the application will be undertaken and will include a review of the listed matters that you see in front of you uh, on this slide. So comments received at this public meeting will also be considered as part of the comprehensive review. In conclusion, Your Worship, staff put forth the following recommendation as shown here for your consideration. Once again, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to obtain any further public in input and comments. The application remains in technical review. Staff will return to Council in the future with a recommendation report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Um, are there questions for Mr. McConnell? Councillor Duddock. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, and thank you very much for the presentation. <coughs> Pardon me. There are two um, items that you have captured in the mm -hmm. issues that you indicated, mm -hmm. but just to um, reinforce the tree preservation, especially the mature trees towards the, the lakefront, they're, they're of mm -hmm. consideration. I've actually already been in dialogue with mm -hmm. our forestry department, so I'm pleased with that. The other thing that was raised at the public information meeting was the, um, and I see it here as well, the road alignment with the bottom of Morden. Has there been any further dialogue with the applicant in regards to, um, at one point where we're talking about the patterning of the lots towards the lakeshore frontage, whether or not there was a provision to maybe move it along. Has there been anything further? So we are continuing to look at that issue with our uh, traffic engineering department and our, our traffic engineer. So we are looking very carefully um, at whether or not there is a need to actually align it uh, or, or if there's um, merit in leaving it as proposed. So we will come back and do that full analysis. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Other questions? Madam Clerk, are there delegations on this? Oh, Councillor Elgar? No, uh, Councillor Duddick. Uh, Nailed what I was going to ask about. All right. Delegations? None. Are there members of the public with information on this file for council? Apparently not. Councillor Duddick. Thank you, Worship. Obviously, they did a good job of capturing all the issues. I'll move the uh, receipt. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. On item number 13, we have a public meeting and recommendation report, and this is not a huge matter either, I, except perhaps to those involved. This is the extension of a temporary use bylaw for the Madeiros Boat Works on Burnham Thorpe Road East. Uh, council, do you are there members of the public here with information for council on this matter? I didn't think so. Council, do you need a presentation? Councilor Noll, I do not require a presentation, but I do have a question about this uh, file. 
you have the floor. Um, I've been moving this uh, bylaw since I was first elected um, every couple of years and uh, happy to do so each year. But I'm curious as to whether or not um, this particular landowner is aware of what's coming um, in terms of uh, the North Oakville secondary plan. And have we given them adequate uh, advance notice that they need to start considering the fact this will not be acceptable in the future? Through you, Mr. So has, over the last 12 years, has he noticed? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a good question. They're pretty busy. They're Trish. pretty busy little shipyards, so I don't know if they're if they're that uh, closely connected to our planning. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the the uh, owner, the applicant, is aware of the uh, applications. He receives every notice of the applications that have been um, submitted. Between obviously the ones to his knowledge would be between Six Line and Dundas, or sorry, Trafalgar. So he is aware of the impending development that is creeping northwards um, in that quadrant, and um, it is likely as phased, he's in the phase two area of North Oakville. Services will be extended down there um, as development gets closer, and uh, this is likely one of the last extensions to take place. I'm just gonna ask you, is this the last or one of the last, do you believe, or do you have a sense of timing at this point? I do not have okay. a crystal ball on that, but uh, I would say this is this is very likely the last one. Okay, thank you very much. I'll move the uh, recommendation, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to note so that everybody understands, development may be creeping closer to him, but he's not required to do it, right? Councillor Hutchins? Yes, hi. I, I just had one question for you. Um, boat building can involve a, a, a number of... Uh, so we say toxic substances, depending on what type of building is there. And I understand that this is on a well and septic tank. Mm -hmm. Are we aware of any problems there? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not aware of any um, complete studies that have been done on this property because of submission, a complete um, submission for a subdivision or um, a zoning bylaw amendment has not been submitted at this time. When it does, uh, we, the region in conjunction with the town will be looking at all of the studies that will be applicable to that site. They'll, they'll have to, if, there, if anyone wants to develop it, they'll have to produce a certificate that it's been cleaned. Okay. Councillor I just, just, um, um, just to follow up on your comment, I, I understand that he has obviously property rights, but the, the point I was making was that uh, we've been exempting them from uh, the bylaw in that area for a uh, considerably long time. So while he may be able to, the company may, may choose not to develop, we will not be able to, I would imagine, to continue to uh, approve this incompatible use when residential and commercial home, uh, commercial businesses are in the area. When you're ready and council agrees to exert that kind of pressure, that's certainly available to council. But it profits us nothing to do now. So I'll support your motion. All those in favor of the councillor's motion, and that carries. Thank you. Uh, item number 14, I believe there may be a person or two in the uh, gallery today who's been waiting patiently for this. Uh, this is a public meeting report on a proposed town initiated, initiated zoning bylaw amendment with respect to the Glen Abbey Golf Course. And we'll have a presentation from Leslie Gilwood. And we have at least one registered delegation. And I will poll the audience for others um, at the appropriate time. Leslie, we are all yours now. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a public meeting to hear comments related to a proposed town-initiated zoning bylaw amendment for the Glen Abbey Golf Course, and the staff report is on page 335 of the agenda package. Would you just mention up the top that this is not a recommendation or decision report? Absolutely. I know you'll do it at the end, but... Okay. This is not a recommendation report. <laughs> We're here to hear public comments about this proposed town-initiated zoning bylaw amendment related to the golf course. So here we have an air photo of the golf course, just to refresh everybody's memory. It's also known as 1333 Dorval Drive. 
The interim control bylaw, which applies to the Glen Abbey property and expires January 31st, 2018, provided for the completion of the town's urban structure review, as well as the cultural heritage landscape assessment of the property. That assessment was completed as part of phase two of the town's cultural heritage landscape strategy implementation, and the Glen Abbey property was found to have local, provincial, and national significance. As a result, on May 8th, Council recognized 1333 Dorval Drive as a significant <coughs> cultural heritage landscape and directed staff to move into phase three, the implementation of protection measures. Following that, on August 21st, Council unanimously voted to proceed with a notice of intention to designate the Glen Abbey property as a significant cultural heritage landscape under Section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act. As a side note, a third party filed an objection to that, and that matter has been referred to the Conservation Review Board, or CRB, for consideration and a report back to Council. On September 26th, Council adopted two official plan amendments, or OPAs, that are currently being considered for approval by Halton Region, the first being OPA 15, which deletes Schedule A1 urban structure of the Livable Oakville Plan and replaces it with a new Schedule A1. And in Schedule A1 of OPA 15, the Glen Abbey property is identified as Heritage Conservation District slash Cultural Heritage Landscape, and that is uh, in reference to the Cultural Heritage Landscape on the property. OPA 16 updates the town's cultural heritage policies and the associated definitions in the Livable Oakville Plan. And in reviewing my presentation, I note that perhaps the most obvious bullet is missing, and that is that the provincial policy statement, the 2017 growth plan, and the town's official plan require the conservation of significant cultural heritage resources. So, moving forward with that, we are proposing a zoning bylaw amendment for the Glen Abbey property, uh, zoning bylaw amendment ZBA, uh, and that would regulate the use of the Glen Abbey property and the erection, location, and use of buildings and structures thereon to ensure that the cultural heritage value or interest and heritage attributes as identified through the cultural heritage landscape assessment of the Glen Abbey property are retained. In terms of the effect, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment would apply a new special provision to the entire Glen Abbey property. The special provision would identify blocks within the property, which would be subject to specific use permissions and regulations. The effect would be to permit the existing golf course and the existing accessory uses, as well as the existing office uses in the Raydor Estate Office Building and allow all existing buildings and structures as well as temporary structures related to golf tournaments. The existing zoning permits a hotel within three defined areas of the zoning bylaw of the property, um, but excluding the Radar Estate Office Building. Those three defined areas are the three blobs you can see in the photograph and the image um, just to the right of it. They're in pink. Um, so those, those, those shapes, those blobs, currently have permission for a hotel. Um, and so in the proposed zoning bylaw amendment, we would continue the hotel permission, but within a newly defined block um, surrounding and including the Radora State Office Building. So the existing blobs <laughs> where the hotel is permitted are in pink, and the new uh, proposed um, larger block are... Uh, is shown in blue and encompasses the three pink ones. <clears throat> uh, we would also apply an H or holding provision to that new, that new block and before the owner could apply to council for a bylaw to be passed to remove the H symbol, it would have to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the town that the proposed alteration of the property to provide a hotel has been subject to a heritage impact assessment and has received town consent under section 33 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Since notice was issued on this, uh, we have received a number of written submissions, which I understand have been distributed to council. 
Most of the comments do not reference the town initiated zoning bylaw, but express general support for the retention of the golf course. Uh, one email objected to maintaining permission for a hotel. The purpose of the meeting tonight is to hear new comments specifically related to the town initiated zoning bylaw amendment for the Glen Abbey property. And the recommendation is that those comments uh, from the public on this matter be received. At this point, I'd like to let council know that staff will be proposing an amendment to establish, uh, an official plan amendment to establish cultural heritage policy areas, including one for the Glen Abbey property. And we'll be presenting an information report on that on December 12th. And formal notice will be issued December 14th. Then uh, on January 30th, we will report back on the official plan amendment and the proposed zoning bylaw amendment we're discussing now. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for a very interesting report. Council, do you have questions? Councillor Elgar? Just wonder if you can repeat those dates so that people realize. Sure. So next week, there's a special planning and development council meeting scheduled December 12th. And there will be a report on the addendum agenda about a proposed uh, town initiated official plan amendment to establish cultural heritage special policy areas, including one for the Glen Abbey property. Uh, notice will be given December 4th and um, a subsequent report will go to council January 30th next year. Council, any other questions of uh, Ms. Gilwood? All right, Madam Clerk, would you call the uh, listed delegation or delegations? Our first delegation is Mark Gonselman. Welcome, sir. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, uh, Mayor Burton and Council. I'm going to be uh, very very brief. I have to say all this discussion about uh, ice cream has uh, made me both hungry and uh, your stamina is to be commended through all this. Um, I am a 20 plus year resident of uh, Glen Abbey. I'm also a member of a participant in Save Glen Abbey. Uh, I understand the materials tonight are not coming forward with recommendation. I also understand that they're largely clarifying. And so, again, coming forward on that basis that these are clarifications so that the uh, rules for the golf course going forward, how it can operate, how it can operate within uh, golf tournaments going forward, the Canadian Open, etc., um, all seem not controversial. And in fact, I think uh, from my perspective personally and from St. Glen Abbey, uh, are welcome uh, going forward. Um, this is a journey uh, that I've been participating in as a layperson. I think that it is continuing through. Uh, the phases of the cultural heritage review. I'm quite pleased that you just quoted the dates. I was going to actually ask about that. So I appreciate your clarifications that this is going forward on the cultural heritage side on December the 12th. I wanted to make a, uh, a restatement of a past submission that um, the vast, vast majority of Oakville residents believe that the Glen Abbey Golf Course, its buildings, its green space, its existing attributes should be protected, should be preserved. It has both historical and heritage value. This has been reviewed and uh, reconfirmed by the various experts that have presented to council previously, so I am just simply reiterating their findings. I would ask that council please remain resolute and stay the course to protect it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your information, sir. Are there questions for the gentleman? Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. The next delegation is Peter Sharp. Mr. Sharp, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Councillors, uh, given the lateness of the hour, you may be delighted to find that um, my my delegation was aimed at speaking against the development itself and not against the very technical aspects of the zoning bylaw. So if, you, if it's all right for me to speak against that, then I'll continue to do so. If it's just the zoning, 
then uh, I'll give you a break. And it's very good of you to uh, restrict your remarks to the matter before the House. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Clerk. Our next delegation is Gary Mark. Mr. Mark. That looks like a long speech. It's props. Welcome. We look forward to your information. Uh, your worship, councillors, uh, staff, neighbors, thank you for this opportunity uh, to delegate on behalf of the thousands of supporters of the Save Glen Abbey Co Coalition. Uh, my name is Gary Mark. I'm a resident on Gallery Hill. Uh, of the Fairway Hills community in the established four decade old um, Glen Abbey neighborhood. Um, I just wanted to quickly present to you a document, an item to be sh shown on the document here. If you could, uh, yeah. What we have here is, um, is presented in interest. It's the first day cover from um, uh, from Canada Post in June 1995. Um, and just out of interest, uh, 22 years ago, the stature of Glen Abbey was cemented by this commemoration. And uh, I just wanted to point out that it's very significant to recognize um, the historical value and the, uh, the, the fame uh, that Glen Abbey has, even from long ago. And so I just wanted to just present this out of interest to uh, Council. Um, my comments will be brief now. Um, the Save Glen Abbey Coalition has collectively researched and reviewed um, the, th the, the thorough heritage studies as part of the Cultural Heritage Landscapes Assessment, the Letourneau Heritage Consulting, Ken Moody, and Julian Smith, and we are extremely satisfied uh, by the thorough and evidentiary assessment. Um, and we, uh, we recognize that Glen Abbey is of significant cultural heritage value. The uh, proposed zoning bylaw amendment is therefore supported by our group uh, and as examples of the two other um, designated golf courses in Ontario specifically, Heritage Designated, operating fruitfully over the past decade. Uh, we look forward for many more years of continued profitable enterprise by Club Link, keeping the golf course with the new proposed uh, amended bylaw. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mark, for your information and questions. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk. That was our last listed delegation. Are there other members of the public with information for council on this file? Yes, ma'am. My name is Jan Van Hoeksloot, and I think I've spoken this evening. Good evening, Your Worship and Councillors. Um, I just want to um, to lend my support to the fact that I really, really, really want um, our council to represent what the people have said. Um, it is a democratic process and I'd like you to remain resolute and resolute in terms of being totally encompassing. One of the things that disturbed me the most in all the di uh, dialogue that was going on between um, the lawyer for Club Link and the people is the argument that, well, it can't be every tree and every bush. And that really is a, a citizen really bothered me because the golf course is the golf course with a fence around it and it's that property. And I think that, that I want to reiterate that the people are expecting that it stay in, encompassed total. In other words, I don't know what goes on when you go to the, uh, the next stage, um, but I would hate to see it kind of parceled, par parceled up in terms of, okay, this is heritage, but this is not. I know you have a plan and I want you guys to stay resolute to it. There has already been building. Fairway Hills expanded. Um, there were townhouses that expanded as well. And I think that the people um, are looking at this golf course as anything that is behind that fence. And certainly Club Link themselves place a label on, there's a big sign out there right now with the monk, and I've mentioned the monk before. They already know that behind that fence that encompasses that property, there is a heritage um, idea behind it and it's being leveraged for marketing. Um, when the Open is on and on their website, they talk about the historical Glen Abbey golf course. They don't say it's this part of what's behind that fence. They're saying 
the whole area behind that fence. And so I just want to ask that, um, I don't know whether there's dialogue that goes on at the next stage or whether there's a chance for that land to be parceled, um, but I think the people of Oakville want you to stay resolute and stay firm be between that whole piece of property. Um, so let me, let me ask just two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, ha are you aware of the uh, contents of the heritage landscape uh, uh, notice of designation? Uh, yes, I do. How the, the town staff have framed the protection of the heritage landscape? Yes, I do. But I also hear the arguments uh, so, from the other side. Well, well, let's put them aside for a second, mm -hmm. and I'll come back to that. I have no dispute with what's going forward. So, so having regard to what we did, mm -hmm. Were you and are you comfortable with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. What I don't want to see is higher levels eating away at that. That's what I don't want to see. Well, we live in a crown system of government and we have higher levels and we face them, we, we always face them in a resolute way, but, right. but we also try to remember who we are. Right. With regard to what you hear from the other side, mm -hmm. I would suggest to you that you should treat it as interesting, but clearly, on an objective description, it's it's self-interested. Oh, sure, absolutely. So, council is the decider, mm -hmm. to use a George Bushism, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're only talking to them through our solicitors. Right. And we think we're setting a good example. I'm just trying to reinforce, though, being that this is a process, and we have seen, not necessarily in this thing, but in other things, as things go to other levels, things get eroded. And I just want to reiterate that I think it's, this is a situation, I'm not a golfer. I don't have a vested interest, I don't play golf, in the actual golf course itself. I do have a vested interest, though, in what it brings to this town, how important it is to myself and the community. Um, being in Atlanta and seeing it on TV when we happen to be at a basketball tournament and going, wow, that's our town. Um, but I also have lived long enough, got gray hair to show for it, that things change. And I'm just saying that I, as a, as a person, I want to reiterate how that this has been a democratic process you've spoken and we need to be resolute on all levels with this, uh, heritage and otherwise, to make sure that nothing gets eaten away. And that's what my point was. We all want that outcome. Yes, awesome. As long as we're on the same page. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. As before, would you introduce yourself for the clerks and share your information? My name is Paul Rice. I'm president of Fairway Hills Housing Association, adjacent to Glen Abbey Golf Course. We've spoken a lot. We've pointed our points out. Tonight, we just want to reiterate our support for the town and its initiated uh, bylaw amendment. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's speaking to the issue before us and in a very short and crisp way. We appreciate that. Anyone else? If we're out of volunteers, we will look to Councillor Elgar. Thank you. Through uh, Mayor Burton, uh, I would like to move receipt of the report. And as we've always done with this application, I'd ask for a recorded vote, even though it is rece received only. What the heck? To agree to receive the information from the public, please rise to be named. I just point out that Councillor Lapworth, having declared a conflict, won't be voting on this. And I'd also like to point out that I'm not sure any member of this house has ever voted against receiving information. Oh, wait, maybe one or two. But I know they have. I've never voted against receiving information. Uh, Councillor Lischina, Councillor Adams, Councillor Grant, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Elgar, Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Giddings, Councillor Chisholm, Councillor Duddick, there you are, Councillor Robinson, Councillor O'Meara, and Mayor Burton. I declare the receipt received unanimously, and I thank everybody for their efforts in this. Let's. Let's, uh, let's see if we can turn to item number 15, which is the recommendation report for the draft plan of condominium for 
MC Oak Village, which is Minto Communities. And uh, we have a presentation from Tricia Collingwood. And do we have registered delegations? No, we don't. All right. Are there members of the public with information for council on this matter? All right, Tricia. Um, I'm, I'm a little unclear because this is a recommendation report. We, I feel we, we don't need to make the presentation. Well then, council, you get to make a decision. Who's willing to make the decision? Councillor Adams. I'll move the recommendation of staff. Discussion? <laughs> well, we know who's voting for it. All those in favor? That's carried, and thank you very much. Um, now we have an addendum, item number 16, which is the recommendation report on the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for the Cortel Group. And you have a revised bylaw in front of you, according to the memo. And Tricia Collingwood is standing by. Are there members of the public with information for council on this matter? Council, there are none. Do you want to make a decision? Councillor Grant wants to make a decision. Actually, I have a couple of questions before uh, I'll let Councillor Councillor Grant can ask questions. <clears throat> thank you. Um, and, and thank you for uh, the revised report. I, I must have missed this the first time we looked at it, but I, I realized reading through all the revisions that um, we're looking at one parking spot per unit. And is that something new? Because I thought it was usually 1.25 per unit in a raised condominium. In the, through you, Mr. Through, you, Mr. Mayor, through um, the uptown core growth area being located near a transit station, we are looking at reduced parking standards of instead of a 1.25 of a one um, per unit, inclusive of the visitor and sharing with the rest of the development's parking. Okay, inclusive of visitor. All right. And then also, I realize that um, uh, the region uh, Halton Conservation still have to work on this, but there is a, a part of the uh, conservation area that's being clipped by the one of the buildings, I think phase one. Um, I realize that there's no information now, but when it comes to site plan, would that be a Schedule A recommendation? Through you, Mr. Mayor, we are working on with uh, Conservation Halton diligently to look at any encumbrances that are taking place within their sensitive lands. We are almost at a full resolution of those issues and those will be dealt with through site plan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Grant, is that a motion too? Councillor Noll then. Um, I, I'll give you a motion, but I just want to, I have a comment as well. We're open for business. So um, I want to first of all thank the staff uh, on this application. I know you've worked hard on it. It's been on our desks for a while. This is the second owner of the property, or third owner of the property since um, this has been an issue of development. And uh, while it's, 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 it's uh, strange to be enthusiastic about a high-rise development of this nature, I am enthusiastic about this because it is exactly what the doctor ordered when it comes to the development of the Uptown Core in order to it for it to eventually see um, it's, uh, its ultimate goal of being a, 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 a complete community amongst itself, a, 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 an uptown area. Uh, we really need the residents in that particular area to support the stores, the businesses, similar to a, the Bronte argument we heard earlier tonight as well. Um, and uh, I know it's been long fought to, uh, to get it to exactly what we want, uh, and I appreciate the staff's determination on this file, uh, and I'm very pleased to move the recommendation this evening. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, I'd like to thank staff for making it prettier than it started out to be. Oh, I have agreement on from, so there's more than me who thinks that you made it pretty. I want to thank you for that. Worship, that was actually one of my biggest points I just made, the, the, the fact that they, they really kept the, the developers, uh, you know, nose to the wheel here, made sure that we got something more than just a, a banal, standard looking, you know, uh, you know, four towers exactly the same height. It's, it's a nice looking development. It's going to give us the density we want, and I totally agree with you. A gateway building, to coin a phrase. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Um, so now we have a confidential discussion item, the OMB appeal on the Ennisclair Drive West. And as I understand it, the councillors from the ward would like to move the staff recommendation in there. 
and therefore there's there's really no need to go into camera unless anyone disputes that. Councillor Hutchins is indicating that he's moving the staff recommendation. That's the block at the top of page uh, five, as opposed to alternative option one or alternative option two. Anyone uh, discontent with this approach? All those in favor? And that is adopted. Uh, then we have the Livable Oakville Official Plan Review Council Subcommittee Minutes. Councillor Duddick, are you satisfied with those? Councillor Duddick moves a receipt of the minutes from the committee. All those in favor? Or shall we have a recorded vote? Uh, perhaps we could have a recorded vote on receiving the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee minutes. Councillor Lischina moving them. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, I believe we may be at the point, with a half an hour to spare, where we could ask for a motion to rise and report. Am I right? Councillor Robinson is moving rise and report. All those in favor? That is carried. Uh, I rise and report the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on discussion items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 15, and 16, consent items 8, 9, 10, and 11, public hearing items 12, 13, and 14, confidential discussion item C1, advisory committee minutes items 17 and 18, as noted by the clerk. May I have a mover and seconder for my report? Councillor Giddings, thank you. Quick question. Uh, Councillor Elgar, thank you for the second. Sorry. Councillor Knoll, your question. Um, I just, I'm sorry if I missed this in the flurry of uh, final activity, but did we receive the uh, confidential item with respect to uh, Cortell? I wasn't paying, I, I, was, I was talking to my colleague, I shouldn't have been doing that, I want to make sure we've received that. That is just an appendix to So the there's appendix. no receipt necessary? Okay, thank you very much. I don't mean to tell you how to do your job, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. I have tried to always be grateful for any assistance offered. All those in favor of the report? And the report is carried. Um, new business of emergency congratulatory or condolence nature. Anyone? <laughs> All righty then. How about a mover and seconder for this list of bylaws? Councillor Hutchins and Councillor Chisholm, all in favor? The bylaws as presented and um, as revised are adopted. Um, Council, I think we've reached the happy end of a very long multi-day agenda. I congratulate you on how great it's been to work with you and uh, I look forward to our next opportunity. And we are now adjourned.